Hey guys, this is Matt Rack one and today I'm going to be making my first video. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while, but wanted to do something other than just a typical session review. Well, in this video I will be reviewing a session of mine. I'll be experimenting with building a game plan around some non-standard lines and trying to see if we can get regs to make large mistakes by showing them things they're unaccustomed to. I felt making this video could be interesting because during this time period I began incorporating a lot of donk leads into these game plans versus regs and I'd noticed most were making significant mistakes versus them. Donk leads are now a much larger part of my standard game. I'm a fan of thinking outside the box to evolve your game. I'm building non-standard game plans. You can learn new things to incorporate into your regular game. I also think it will be good to make a video where I will be making a lot more mistakes than usual and be able to talk through them and discuss adjustments I can make to play those situations better. In this video, I'll be playing a reg at $100 turbo heads up sit and goes. He's a $50 to $100 reg with a silver star and shark scope as well as having a 3% ROI over more than 3k games. While I may have had other tables versus other players during the session, I'll review single opponent to keep reads and strategy consistent. What I'm going to do is just go step by step through each hand and uh, hopefully breeze through some of the pretty standard stuff and spend more time talking about things that uh, people may not be accustomed to seeing and uh, hopefully uh, find some good things to talk about. Um, here we start with uh, King 7. Uh, we raise, we get 3-bet, and we're not going to do anything crazy the first hand, right? So we fold. Uh, onto the next hand. 10-7. He raises, we defend, flop comes, and we lead for 40. Uh, I think this is a good flop to lead, if we're, especially when we're building our strategy on leading. Uh, if he were to raise something like 6-8 offsuit here, um, he should just be giving up and folding, and you take the pot right here, and you essentially take his c-bet away from him. Uh, if he comes over the top, you know, we just fold. He, uh, We also learn how he's going to react to our donk bets pretty early on for cheap, and we figure out his, we can figure out his sizing if he raises us, and potentially figure out a frequency that he does it if we're going to start doing this frequently. Uh, he raises us to 160, which that's good news for us because, I mean, obviously we want to win the pot, ideally, but him raising to 160 here is clearly a situation that we should be able to exploit in the future. Uh, the pot is only 120, and by him making it 160, if he's ever bluffing here, he's giving himself a terrible price, and we can easily exploit that later by leading a strong hand or even, you know, a draw with, you know, close to 50% equity where we can re come over the top again. Um, so this this is important information that we've learned about the future of this match with this player. Uh, we fold, he wins, and we go to the next hand. Uh, we have king nine. We raise. He defends, and there's a flop. And this time he leads into us. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I believe this this was the first match with this guy. I don't know if there was any meta game yet. Um, sometimes I flat here. Sometimes I raise. Um, it just depend. It depends on the meta game a lot. Um, let's see. In this situation, I raise. And see, this is this is along the lines of how to counter a donk. If if somebody were employing a strategy against me that was similar to the one I was just talking about, building it on donk leads, this is the correct sizing. There's 120 in the pot, and you make it 90. If I were to rebluff somebody here and take away their donk leads, I think 90 is a good size. It's not a min raise, and it's still giving you a good price to take the pot. Uh, in this situation, I also don't necessarily think he's going to be leading an ace. Um, if he is frequently, it's going to be a weak ace, something ace eight or worse, and I don't necessarily think he's going to, you know, get stacks in on the flop with a hand like that. Uh, uh, in this situation, he comes over the top. <laughs> that, I mean, that looks kind of full of shit, but. So he's come over the top, and again, like I said, I don't necessarily think he is going to town with a weak ace, uh, unless he flat something like ace king, or he flatted it, or he hit ace two, uh, or a set. I think it's really hard for him to be doing this for value. So it, 
it's likely a I mean, it's probably a flush draw more than it is for value. Um, flush draw or total full of shit, or it could also be a nine. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't have enough reads on this guy yet to make any deficient conclusion. But I'm not going to uh, fold my king nine that easily here. He'd probably have to barrel me off on a bad run out for me to to let it go. And we'll call and call and uh, see what he does on the turn. He turn comes a seven of spades and he checks. Uh, like I said on the the flop, flush draw is a pretty significant part of his range. Um, I'd like to think that he didn't just do that with total air. So I think a flush draw, a f flush card hits him some percentage of the time. I do think it's possible going along with that. I didn't think he'd go completely nuts with a weak ace. He could have an ace here and just have taken not the greatest line and he's in the process of pot controlling here on the turn uh, for that reason I actually like a bet on the turn some percentage of the time I don't mind checking back and taking the showdown or trying to get to showdown here um, and maybe calling a bet on the river but I think betting on the turn here is probably ideal a small number and uh, my reasoning for that is if hypothetically if he does have an ace or even if let's say he has two pair and he's doing this to pot control against a flush i think we get to showdown cheaper by betting something like 190 and him calling with a hand that beats us as well as his draws if he turned to draw like if he has if he did this with i don't know like if he did do it with a nine or something and he has a spade in his hand, or even if he has a nine, period, and he's just going to check, call, or bet, now we've gotten value from our hand as well by betting the turn while minimizing our losses if he does happen to have an ace and he check calls and then he checks the river and we get to see the showdown for cheaper. Whereas if we check back here and he has an ace and he bombs like 400, we're in a pretty awkward spot. And if he had air on the flop, then we're just folding the best hand, and I don't necessarily like folding the best hand if I can help it <laughs> so uh, it's a, like I said it's a toss-up between a check or a bet here but uh, I like I, I like betting and probably bet calling some percentage of the time I'm looking at his stats and he seems aggressive enough but uh, those are stats built up over the session I don't know if I had those reads yet so I take the safe route and check like I said I mean early early on in the game I don't necessarily want to start bet calling off second pair in this spot and the terrible spade comes on the river um, I'm probably if he bats I'm probably just folding because even if he did have total air and he turned he runnered some kind of spade I'm just gonna fold uh, he checks and I gladly will take a showdown here and he wins <laughs> okay, all right. So 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 he's got seven three. So on the flop, my read was pretty accurate that he was pretty full of shit, and uh, he just backed into two pair, I guess. So our reads on the flop were pretty accurate, and he turned he turned a pair. So I guess he was pot controlling with pair. So a bet on the turn probably would have been good. He probably check call seven if I bet one ninety, um, or he just folds. I mean, either way. I don't think he was check shoving or anything. On to the next hand. King Jack, we defend. Uh, King six seven. All right, and on this board we lead. This is uh, normally as a standard in this spot against somebody with a high c bet frequency. I'm probably just check raising, but again, in this particular game, we are building a strategy on donk leading and trying to take advantage of their their tendencies when they make mistakes against our donk leads and we've already seen on the what was it the very first hand or the second hand we've already seen that against our donk leads he's making large raises uh, so I think this might be this it looks like this may be more profitable than check raising because he's already shown us that he's willing to come over the top for a bad price and in this case, he only makes it 120. Uh, before, obviously, he made it 160, and this time he's only made it 120. Uh, here, I think I, I think coming over the top again is the best in this situation. Um, if we just call, 
and check the turn and he has a draw he can take a free turn and we don't want to necessarily let him raise here with a draw we check the turn he checks behind um, ideally I want to try and induce him to get it in with a draw here on the flop but if I raise in this situation it's hard to pick a number that doesn't look like I'm committed but again because we donk led this flop I think that we'll get a whole lot, we'll get a lot less credit than normal um, if we come over the top here I don't think he'll put us on a king very often uh, I elect to make it 255 that's that's probably a good number yeah I like it still <laughs> I mean obviously I did it before I still like it and he comes over the top and I guess now we're just gonna get it in I just shove or uh, do that I guess I mean whatever <laughs> I mean that's not standard whatever but it works and we get get it in and I win and he has king three so by donk leading in this situation we got him to pretty much go ape shit with top pair there so okay next hand we got ace king raise called he donk leads into us again we've already established that last hand we made it 90 so I hope we do the same thing yes we may do the same thing and he flats this turn card looks like it hits his range semi-frequently if he had like a straight draw or something like that a lot of times he'll have hit a pair or he will have even if he had a pair on the flop a lot of times he's turned a straight draw or something like that as well so let's see he checks uh, I probably bet big hopefully I bet big here because uh, I don't think he's folding the turn very often if ever because that turn card just smashes him so 180 is the minimum I would bet and that is exactly what I bet and he shoves and get it in and we win he's got ace jack all right well that's not necessarily what I thought he had but I think he gets it in with a uh, much wider range than just ace jack um, I think if he has like I don't necessarily think he shoves with a much wider range than ace jack but I think if he has 10-9 or 8-9 or 7-10 or 7-8 those type of hands I'm pretty sure he's calling a big bet on the turn and potentially a river shove um, alright that's it for this tournament and I'm gonna go ahead and load up the next one